welcome to MDC guys and congratulations on your brand new purchase of the Voyager rear fork. I've got Ange here from the Brisbane store and we're about to go through how to set it up for you. Let's go. One of the biggest things with a rear fold camper is trying to find that level ground which is going to make everything sit perfectly for you. If you don't have that option and you just don't have any level ground, there are a few little things that you can do that's going to make it a little bit easier for you and obviously try and get that camper as level as possible for you as well. I'm just going to take you through some of those now. One of the best things that you can do is try and lower that jockey wheel. Once you've unhitched, lower that jockey wheel down a little bit. That's going to allow for the actual top of the trailer to be able to go across underneath and then you can use your stabilising legs and your jockey wheel to level everything straight back up again. So our next step when doing our Voyager rear fold is to put down your stabilised legs. So lift from the top to make it a lot easier. Pull and that'll just drop down. You'll find that it's a little bit tight when you first do it. That's only because it's brand new. So lower it down just enough so that you just have enough pressure on the bottom of the stabiliser leg that you're not actually lifting up the trailer. Your spindle will be found in the front toolbox when you first pick up your camper. On the front of the trailer you've obviously got your winch. Now this is going to assist in actually setting up and packing down the camper. A little handy hint is if you actually wind this out enough, pop a little mark on there for where you're actually going to need it. Do that the first time and every single time that you open it up, you're obviously going to go straight to that mark. Best idea is pretty much the gold markers or the silver markers, it's going to stay on there for you. Um, pull it out to that and as I say, literally every time you'll have it spot on in the right spot. So very important when you're first undoing your camper is undo from the back to the front. That will allow you to be at the front when your camper opens up on the gas struts. So once you've actually opened up the camper, a good little trick is pop around and actually just grab your canvas, pop it up a little bit, it just loosens it, makes it easier for you when you go to set it up from the inside. If you are doing a one night stay, a little hint is that you can actually keep this strap on, it makes it so much easier in the morning when you go to actually pop the camper back over. If you are going to do that though, you do need to obviously give a little bit more slack because the tent is going to go up quite a long way. If you're doing a longer stay, definitely suggest unhooking it, winding it back in, popping it on the front there, and then, then you can obviously use the camper as be. But today we're actually going to fully set this up, so we're going to remove this off, because we're also going to have the tropical roof on the top. Once you've actually got the floor down onto the ground, if you are on uneven ground, you do have some little feet in the bottom. So I'm just going to show you those. Down here underneath here, now they actually fully come out, but they're obviously going to give you a little bit more if you do need it. Tighten them off to where you need it, and that's going to sit nice and sturdy, and you're not going to rock at all. The next step, you've obviously got your legs there, everything's level, it's fitting, sitting nice and sturdy. You'll notice obviously the canvas on the side here, now this is obviously needing to go over, so flapping you over obviously. So Angie's just going to give me a bit of slack, pop that over. And obviously that's going to assist with your rain and whatnot if you do get bad weather. So you can see here we've got all our poles laid out. We're just going to explain how you're going to use each of these. So for the interior of the actual camper, you're going to need four poles. Now these ones have actually got a C-clamp on the top of them. On the bottom of them, they've actually got rubber feet. The shorter ones are going to be for the bed area. These longer ones here are going to be for the actual end of the camper. So we'll show you how those go in shortly. And Edge is just going to explain the tropical. So these are both ends of your tropical roof. We'll actually explain to you how to put it up in our next little segment. So these are your seat clamp spreader poles. We only need one inside, but there is optional extras and we'll show you that just in a moment. So with your camper, you are gonna receive this quite large bag. Now inside here is all of your canvas. 
The first one we're going to need today is going to be the tropical roof. Okay, so just lay this one out flat. Okay, so you notice in the middle that you've actually got an area here that you can actually feed the pole through. Really, really important that you only feed through one side because otherwise it's not going to fit on the camper. Okay, so easiest way is going to be to fold it back to where the pole is, pick up the actual pole and start walking it from the back over. You are more than likely going to need a stepladder, so just have one of those handy. Okay, so you're going to pop this foot up into the little sock that you've got here. Okay, once you get it through, just push it in. Bring that canvas back over here and you're ready to do the other side. So the other side of your pole obviously goes straight through into the sock. Pop that in, it does have to meet up with the other pole. And then you've actually got another sock on the outside here. So this just needs to be lifted up and popped into this sock. Pull that up. So we've just clicked the pole in. Can be a little bit tough with obviously new canvas, but once this is up, it's basically staying on the camper. There's no reason to take it off. Um, we've put the adjusters on as well. So made them nice and taut. And then we're just gonna go to the sides and actually attach it to the side as well. Okay, so we've just folded the canvas back towards the front. This is that tropical roof. You can see that you've got Velcro here and Velcro obviously on the tropical roof. So we're just gonna place that down on top of it. Nice and tight. Push it down. Okay, so at the rear of the camper, it's just the same as when you're in the middle. So just basically feeding this one through, back out through again. Pull that one tight, not all the way down, because you do wanna have a little bit of slack while you're putting up the camper, but just a little bit there that's left and that's all secured basically to the top of the camper now. Okay, so a pointer when you're actually setting up inside the actual camper, sometimes it's a nice idea just to roll everything up a little bit so you've got a bit of airflow, um, but also a bit of light so you can see what you're doing. You don't have to do it neat, just do it rough so you've just got it up. Especially on those hot days like we've got today. Done, and that's just going to allow for a little bit more airflow when we're inside the actual uh, camper. Another little hint, so you can obviously see what you're doing inside and that airflow again. Just pop one of your spreader poles with the foot on the end, just down the end here, and that's going to allow for you to be able to see straight through to the camper and get everything up nice and easy. Okay, so we're just going to pop up on the bed here. We're going to push out the bed poles here, so lift them up a little bit. Make sure your wing nuts are loosened off. Tighten up your wing nuts, nice and easy. You don't have to do it really, really taut the first time. Grab your pole that we spoke about earlier. So this is the bed pole with the C-clip on one end and the foot on the other. There we go. Extend the leg down. Push it up, wing nut it in. And then you've got a little Velcro tab here. So just bring that along, Velcro it around and the bed area is pretty much ready for us to start the rest of the camper. So we're now at the centre pole, so same thing, just make sure that the wing nut is loose and then we're just going to push this up. Wing nut it off. Again, you don't overstretch your canvas, so don't push it all the way out. You're just wanting to have a bit of a structure at the moment that you can go back, fiddle with it if you need be a little bit later on. Hi guys, so we're just doing a little tip and trick. So what you want to do is put your seat clamp in the middle and all you're doing is it extending it out so then Alicia can do each side up. Done. So we now have the two uh, poles that we had earlier that we explained. So the longer poles with the actual spreader or the C-clamp on the top and the foot on the bottom. So we're just gonna release those down a little bit and you're gonna actually pop that straight into the corner here. Push your canvas right out, put the foot right in the corner, tighten off your wing nut, 
and that's going to give you some really good structure on the side. Now we've also got these wing nuts here so we just got to make sure that they're quite loose and then we're going to push this out a little bit as well. Yep, yep just a little bit. Tighten those ones off. Okay, so now we're just going to tidy up. All you have to do is pull your canvas over. all the way around. So on the back of the camper here, you've got two different styles of windows. So this one, little tip and trick. It's nice and easy when you're on your own. Fold everything into a triangle. Flip up the end part. I mean, it's gonna be easier for you to roll, but it also means that you're not gonna have so much canvas in these little areas here where you're hooking it over. So keep it nice and tight. That then allows for this to go around nice and easy because the bulk of your canvas is actually in that center part there. Now you might also notice you've got a little cover, so make sure that that's inside the cover. Reason for that is so that if it does rain, you're not going to end up with a build up of water and when you undo this, it's all going to fall on you. Basically, pop that into the cover, the rain's obviously going to come straight off that. Happy days. So you'll find two hook poles located in your pole bag as well as just your standard spreader pole. So we are hooking in the pole at the end and then you put in your point at the top. This you'll need to zip down. And you'll also have to fully unzip that. Fully extending your pole out so the canvas is tight and then locking that into place. And then your next step is extending your pole so that it's tight, so then you get the airflow through the camper. When you're setting up your camper, it's really, really important to understand the poles that you actually have been provided with. So I'm just gonna run you through really quickly uh, the different types of ends that you might have on these poles. This one here is called a spigot end. Now, you'll find, notice all around the camper, especially on your annex, you've actually got eyelets that these actually feed into. So really nice and easy, keeps everything nice and taut. Um, obviously, once you pop a rope on top of that, it's not going anywhere. This one here, we call it either a spreader pole or I guess um, a C-clamp is the other, other option that you can call. Um, these basically go and wrap around the actual pole. So really good for rain and things like that. So it's actually gonna extend that canvas a little bit, but they're obviously quite tight. They're not gonna come off that pole for you. This one here is what we call a flat end. Now, the flat ends basically will have certain areas in the camper that you're gonna be able to pop these into. The main one is around your annex. So when you've actually got your spigot pole, the spigot pole will actually go through this hole and basically keep everything nice and taut. This one here is actually a hook pole. Now in the camper, these are basically used again on the annex. Now they're actually gonna hook into the actual main structure of the tent and then basically come out from there, run into obviously your spigot and on a lot of, the, a lot of occasions, it's also gonna go into your flat pole as well. Last but not least is obviously the, the poles that have actually got what we call a foot on the end, obviously. Um, now these are obviously going to be more so inside the camper um, and also on the end of your spigot poles as well. So that's obviously going to have a nice little bit of rubber on the end there, so obviously protects the camper when it is on the inside. Um, when it's on the outside, obviously that's going to pop into the ground, keep everything obviously nice and tight and obviously protect your pole as well having that on the end there. So I just wanted to run through with you, I guess, how you identify what bit of canvas or PVC is meant to go where, obviously, on the camper. You will obviously get this in quite a large bag. So easy way to identify, this grey colour here is more of like a PVC. That's actually for your floor in the actual annex area. All of the green is obviously your annex walls, uh, your skirting, so obviously they're going to all be the same colour. The one at the end here is your annex roof. Now it's quite a light colour and it actually matches the top of the camper. So you'll be able to match that colour up and know straight away that that one's actually the annex roof, which is the first one we're gonna need. So easiest way to do the annex is to actually map out the poles before you go and put it up. Another little tr sort of trick, I guess, is that the first pole that you put in is gonna go into that main structure. It's one of those hook poles we were talking about. So Angie's actually gonna pop inside, she's gonna lower those poles down just a little bit so that that hole actually lines up nice and easy for me to be able to put that first pole in. Goes through the sock area here, these socks are great. Once the pole's actually in, you can tighten them off, 
helps with uh, keeping water and everything out. Pops in nice and easy, let that hang and then we're going to move to the next one. Now the one in the middle is a little bit different. Instead of actually having a hole in the uh, main structure pole, you've got a wing nut. So the hook area just goes through that wing nut, same thing, hangs down. You more than likely will need a step ladder for this one. Same thing, you can have a look in and see it. Just let that one hang, nice and easy again, and then we move on to the next one. All right, you feel that go in, again, let that one hang, and then Ange can actually go through, pop those poles back up again, nice and easy, and then we go to start with the rest of the annex. So as you can see, we've actually laid out our annex uh, just in front of us here. Now you can see that the annex is a little bit larger than obviously the, the camper itself. Reason being is that part we spoke about earlier um, at the front of the camper is also going to be attached to this. Uh, biggest things with this is you can see that there's obviously a zipper. So zipper on here is obviously going to attach the actual canvas to the tent. The Velcro here is really important as well. You need to make sure that you're actually Velcroing this down as well so that you're actually going to have uh, protection from water as well. So we're going to start from this side over here. Always start at this side, that's where your zipper is. That's where it's going to go on. We'll pop that on and start zipping it over. Okay, now I'm just going to stand here at the end. Getting the zipper on the first time can sometimes be a little bit hard just because the first time it's gone on. Okay, just try and keep your zipper straight as well. When you get to the middle, you do have a bit of a peak here, so just make sure you're as straight as you possibly can be. And then just follow it all the way to the end of that piece that's at the front of the camper. So it's very important that you get all the kinks out of your Velcro so that when you do get rain, it's gonna be covering all your zippers so that you have no leaks. So if you just come along with the flat end so you're not gonna damage the canvas, just come along and pat it as you go along. And then obviously, when you get to the peak, just keep patting it. Okay, so just loosening off this pole here, taking that end straight out to Ange, who has our, what we call an upright pole, the spigot pole. And she's gonna grab our flat pole as well. So the idea is to have all of the poles on in the corner or the area that you're going to then pop your canvas on. So we grab our canvas, you've got your little eyelet in the top of the canvas there. So we obviously want that to go straight through here. Now each of these poles have a hook and there's also a hole in the pole. So you basically just hook that in, it keeps it nice and tight and then head back to this one and actually spread it out so everything will stay taut. Good little tip is if you pop everything on an angle, it's actually gonna stay there relatively well. Obviously in high winds, not ideal. We don't have very big winds today, so it's gonna be okay. And then basically just move to your next pole. I'll get Ange to hold that one. And I'm just gonna pop in and grab the hook pole that we put on the uh, annex area earlier. Okay, so I've just got the hook pole here, we're just popping that one down. Sometimes helps to put these on an angle, just makes it go in nice and easy. Now we still need the next pole to go on to that before we can put this canvas on. So Angie's just going to grab that. Just always make sure that you have your little wing nuts down, so then that when the canvas is on top, you're not actually going to have any pressure where the wing nut is and you're not going to put a hole in your canvas. to get that hook in we've obviously got to put this up a little bit so you can see the hole okay so now we've come to the front part so we obviously don't have any more hook poles because we're using the front the front canvas there so same concept 
as what we were doing before. And we'll just pop one more in here. So this is actually the flat end pole. So popping that on the top there. And then popping the eyelet over there. Okay, when you get to this area here, you'll notice that there's a sock on here, just like we had up on our hook poles before. So there is actually a hole on this side of the canvas. So this pole is actually gonna go straight through that sock area so that it can actually line up with the eyelet that's just on the outside here. Okay, so through that one there, through the eyelet, let that one up. Now you're not gonna have an actual hook to go onto this one, um, but that's gonna be more secured obviously down when we do the other side here as well. We're just gonna walk around and tighten everything up a little bit on the annex. So with here also making sure that the poles are actually on, you can kind of see, kind of see the canvas is a different colour. You want your poles to be on that area there. So this is the Velcro that pretty much stops flapping in the wind. So if you just do them up, you won't have an issue with flapping. So we've just got a spreader pole here. So that's the one with the C on both ends. So again, make sure you do the highest pole first because it's going to make it a lot easier for you. Popping it down on here. Keeping that obviously out, tightening it off or tensioning it. That's going to keep that area nice and taut for you as well. Okay, so this little front area here, this is an excellent little area. So basically we've already put that pole in we showed you just before. We've got another upright pole here and you've also got a spreader pole. So very similar to the windows. Pop that in, into the eyelet. Oh, I might pop around the front here for this one. Pop them up to the top. Tension off your pole. There is a little bit of Velcro there as well, so pop that one around the pole. Now there is actually two ways to do this. You can rope this down. Obviously if you've got high winds you need to do that. Another thing that you can do is just drop it down a little bit, rest it against the drawbar there, and that's gonna obviously hold for you if you've got weather like we do today, beautiful and sunny. So also with your uh, camper trailer, you will get what we call, it's kind of like a patch kit or a peg bag. Um, so I just wanted to run through what you actually get and what things are actually used for. So you do get a pole diagram. So that one there you can go through and you can actually identify all of your poles via the numbers that are also on them. Great little tip is to also grab some electrical tape, uh, different colours, so different poles, different colours, that way you can easily identify them. You also get all of your pegs, so that's going to be able to peg down all of your annex and you will have a few spares after that as well. These little things here, we commonly get asked what these are, these are actually brilliant. So what they do is, they actually pop on top of the uh, canvas itself. Your upright pole, or your spigot pole, goes straight through here. Before you actually put your ropes on, you actually put the rope on top of this and it's actually going to stop water going through the eyelet that you put the pole through. So they're really, really good. You do have some spare little parts as well. Now these are for your internal poles, so spare little parts if needed. All of your ropes, so that's obviously to rope down your annex, parts of your tent as well. Um, and this little area here, this is what we call the patch kit. So you do actually have two needles in here. You've got some cotton in there that's obviously going to match everything that you need. And you've also got some samples here of pretty much everything that you will need, just in case anything does happen when you sort of are off-road or whatnot, where you can actually fix that up and be on your way. Okay, once you've got the uh, annex up, you're obviously going to want to rope it down. This is really, really important to at least put a few ropes on because if you do get a gust of wind, you're going to end up bending all of your poles. Now, we spoke about these guys earlier. I'm just going to show you how they work. So they actually sit straight through on top of there. That's obviously going to mean the water's going to run off it. And then you pop your rope on top of that and rope down. We've got one rope. Now in wet weather, always make sure you drop your poles down. The reason we do that is because you're going to have a bit of a runoff. Um, it means the water is going to basically run off the top here and you're not going to bend any of your poles with quite a lot of weight in that water if it does sit on the top there. Another way to do that will be spreader bars, but we'll show you that shortly. If you are using one rope, basically just tension it off. Now, general rule, 
one foot out, two foot out, that's pretty much where you're gonna pop your peg. Your peg always goes in on a 45 degree angle. You may need a hammer in some surfaces or even sand peg pegs in others. We're actually quite lucky here, the ground's quite soft so I can pretty much push it right in and then tension that off. And that's gonna be what we would do if we we're just doing the one rope. Obviously look at your canvas as well. If your canvas is pulling in different areas, etc., then you might need to change that. But one rope's gonna be great, for example, where we are today, where it's nice and sunny. If you had wind, rain, those sort of things, you're gonna to need to double rope this, which I'll show you how to do now. Okay, so we've just placed two ropes on on this time, and I have actually taken the other rope out of the ground because we're gonna have it on a different, different angle. When you've got two ropes, or best time to have two ropes, is gonna be if you've got high winds or you've got heavy rain and you really need to obviously make sure everything's really locked down tight. Now when you do have the two ropes, you're pretty much putting them out on, I suppose, different angles out from the pole. So right angle one way, right angle the other. You can bring them in a little bit. Basically follow it down. Same thing again, you're going out pretty much two feet. And again, just popping the pegs in. one here. Tensioning off those ropes again. Popping them in. I'm just using my foot. And that's really going to hold that pole nice and tight for you. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is each individual wall that comes with the camper are separate when you first get them. Now we're actually going to be pretty much putting them all together so then we can put it on as one piece. You'll also have your skirting for your trailer that we'll be putting on as well. So this is the skirting for your trailer that we're just attaching now. Just make sure that when attaching this so it's all flat and you have no kinks in the canvas so that when you get to the end, you're not going to be lacking any canvas. What this skirting does, it, it pretty much stops all wind from drafting underneath the trailer. So that if you do ever get rain or very windy weather, that you're not going to have an issue of it coming up into the camper when you are sitting in here. last bit on and when you're finished this you can also peg down so that no draft actually pushes the draft skirt up so you'll have eyelets on the other side which are here what you do is you'll peg down on an angle so that no draft will come through okay so we velcroed all of our walls together so we're now just going to pop them all up. So I'm just going to take this corner around. So just try and Velcro it onto the side. And then onto the top, which is then going to give you what you need to be able to continue down the side. So really important with your Velcro that you try your best to get it as straight as possible. Otherwise, you're not gonna line up on the other side, which is very disappointing when you get there. Now, I've got Ange on the other side, which is great, because Ange is actually pushing up against my hand. So it means that we're able to do this quite quickly. We've got the pressure on there, ready to go. We're both assisting getting it up. When you get to the corners, you do need to take these hooks out. The best trick is to move the pole in and actually turn your Velcro up. So then that way you can get the Velcro right up where you need it and then tuck it back down again. Once you're around the corner, pop your pole back up and continue going along. Okay, 
Okay, so this is the last bit of your wall. You just gotta make sure that when you're doing this, you're aligning it all. I just have Alicia inside, so she's pushing on the ca canvas on the other side for me. So that we're just getting that fully connected all the way down to the bottom. So your gas is already plumbed into the actual trailer, you will have had gas certification for that as well. All you need to do when you go to set up your kitchen is literally just pop this in, it's a quick connect. So you're popping that in, give it a little bit of a push and a turn and that's going to stay connected up there. Make sure your gas is turned on, everything's ready to go. The other one you need to connect up is your water. So same thing, it is a quick connect, so you're literally just popping it in, it'll clip in, stays there, ready to go, make sure your pump's on and you'll have water through to your kitchen. So when you're putting the kitchen away, just make sure you've got this one here handy. So as you pull that out, push it in. Obviously the runners are gonna latch in for you. Pop that there, ready to go. Close her up. Make sure you lock those when you're traveling and she's good to go. Okay, so we're about to put the flooring in. Now the flooring is great because you can pop the kids out here, you can pop some bunk beds, whatever it is that you need. And it turns this whole area into a whole nother room. So it's really, really beneficial to at least give it a go, but obviously um, popping this in, it's not difficult. It's just something that takes a little bit of practice. So the corner here, we've actually got a bit of a seam. So we're gonna match up that seam with the corner over here and then basically just follow it all the way around. Okay. So just like the walls, you're just Velcroing straight on. So Anne's just gonna take it down that side. I'm just gonna pop mine on this side just so we're making sure we're staying straight. And you literally just do that all the way around. Okay, that's the last little bit in. So now we've actually, what we've done is we've created a whole nother room out here, which is excellent. Because as I say, you can pop the kids in here, you can sit out here if you've got bad weather. You can pop in here, have all of your uh, chairs, your tables, eat your dinner, do your cooking, everything you need to do, and you're under the shade, you're all enclosed, and you're also protected from the ground. It's just brilliant. So guys, now we're actually going to be putting our spreader poles in. This is our last step. What we'll be doing is we'll be going on the angle at the top here, pushing, and that'll actually attach there. So you always see your first one is the highest, and then your second one will be the lowest point. And that'll attach onto here. So you can also put your spreader poles throughout the whole annex and also in your camper trailer in all inside as well, but they're only options. Obviously if there's high winds or if there is rain, also just remember to drop your poles in the corners. So guys, we've been able to set this up. I reckon it's taken probably about 45 minutes or so. Angie and I have had a little bit of experience with this tent. It is a brand new model though. Um, Biggest tips though, make sure when you do set it up the first time, allow yourself a fair bit of time. Take it easy, read all your diagrams, watch obviously your video. Um, make sure that you're just taking your time, taking it slow, working with each other, marking all of those poles and everything. Don't be too hard on yourself. It's not a race in any way, shape or form. Once you've done it a few times, you're gonna find it a lot quicker, a lot easier, and it'll just become second nature for you. So, as I said, biggest tip, take your time, pop it all through, lay all your poles out, do all the things that we've explained in the video, and um, happy camping, get out and enjoy the country.